Good evening, dear friends. Welcome to another episode of the Spiritist Magazine. Every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we join forces. And here at Kardec Radio, to nourish your souls, we bring one article of the Spiritist Magazine. We read the article together, we discuss it, and at the end, we will pray together as well. Welcome. It's always a blessing and an honor to be with you. And today's article is from issue 34 of the Spiritist Magazine. It's titled, Let Us Examine Ourselves. This article is by the Spirit Andrea Luis through the medium Francisco Cândido Xavier, published in a book named Opinião Espírita, which is a Spiritist Opinion, um, in uh, chapter one, published by the Brazilian Spiritist Federation. Andrea Luiz says, question 919 of the Spirit's book, quote, what is the most effective means for improving ourselves in this life? and for resisting the draw of evil. The Spirit's duty is to progressively become better. Thus, it is useful to check from time to time our inner situation by using rigorous personal examination. The Spirit is Christian who who does not progress during three successive years, remains stationary. Test your patience. Quote, are you calmer, more affable, more understanding? Unquote. Inquire regarding your relationships at home. Have you achieved the highest climate of peace? Investigate yourself regarding the activities that are pertaining to you in the Spirit Center. Quote, do you collaborate with greater joy in the harvest of the Lord? Observe yourself before your friends. Quote, do you bring the gospel in livelier attitudes? Unquote. Reflect about your capacity for sacrifice. Quote, do you walk a little freer from the desire of influence in earthly possessions? Do you use more intensely the pronouns we, our, ours, and less determinatives, I, mine, mine? Are your moments of sadness or silent anger sometimes only known to yourself? Rather now? Has the little remorse hidden in the recesses of your soul decreased? Have you dissipated old enemies and dislikes? Have you overcome chronic lapses of inattention and neglect? Have you studied more deeply the doctrine you profess? Do you better understand the function of pain? Do you still cultivate some discreet disagreement? Do you help those in need with greater abnegation? Have you really been praying? Have your idea, ideas revol- evolved? Has your rational faith been consolidated more deeply? Are your words more indulgent? Your arms more active? Your hands more are giving more blessings. The gospel is joy in the heart. Quote, have you, in fact, been more joyful and happy inside in the last three years? Unquote. Everything moves along. Everything evolves. Let us check our individual revenue with Christ. Spontaneously weigh in the existence today while living a peaceful circumstance, so that you may not see the obligation to weigh in tomorrow under the impact of pain. Do not fool yourself. A day is gone is another share of responsibility, another step towards the spiritual life. It is either a valued opportunity or a missed one. 
interrogate your conscience regarding your use of time, of health, and the opportunities of doing the good that you enjoy in your daily life. Do it now while you still have the human body. Use this possibility to reconsider guidelines and easily undo mistakes. Because when you do come to this side, it will often be more difficult. Isn't it a blessing, dear friends? Here we have, here we have Emmanuel guiding the mediumship of Chico Xavier and blessing us with the opportunity of hearing in this message a warning and questions from the spirit, Andrea Louise. You know, we know nothing happens in our lives and to the lives of the ones we love without God's permission. And if we are wise without the agreement with our garden angels, right? So when Andrea Louise is here talking to us today, let us all close our eyes, take a deep breath and envision the presence of the good spirits all around you. Why not? When you read something from an altar, you're connecting with that altar. So may Andrea Louise be blessed where he is, continuing to inspire in us in our spiritist work. First question of the day, have you examined your life and the things you've done today? Remember, what do we have? We have the certainty that all of us have been were born and we have the certainty that we will discarnate. From cradle to grave, everything in between has been planned. There's a reincarnatory plan that you and I need to tap in to fulfill. And sometimes we fulfill the plan, sometimes we come short of the plan. All you have, dear friend, is today, this moment here with me, either live or on demand, this is what you have. It's this minute, this second, this hour. We don't have the guarantee that we're going to be here tomorrow. So Andrea Louise is inviting us to this duty of the Spiritist to constantly become better. So today, you and I are better than we were 10 years ago than we were a million years ago. So they are asking us, the good spirits such as Andrea Louise are asking us to evaluate our lives each and every day. He says here, this Christian spiritist who does not progress during three years remains a stationary. You don't want to be stationary. You want to grow. Progress is the law, the law of progress. You and I will get better we'll be kinder, we'll be calmer, we'll be more patient, we'll be more charitable. And that is a constant invitation, is a constant habit. You have to do it every day. You have to exercise that muscle of kindness each and every day. This Andrea Louise is asking many, many questions. I'm going to bring some, some of those questions to us as, we, as I'm reading now from my tablet. That's where you're going to see me looking down here before i was reading from the pdf now i'm reading from the tablet and guess what you can also download the app to your phone and then you can download the app and you can come here and you can download it will download as you see download there and once it says show you can read the articles and it's much much better then you can see on my screen because of the glare, because you, you're probably not going to see there. There you go. But anyway, so this beautiful issue, which is a letter to the youth. It's dedicated to the youth. And when we are young, right, we may think we have all the time in the world. But really what you have is today. You have right now to be here with me and with the good spirit. So let's tackle some of these questions. And let us meditate on what we are doing with our lives. He's saying here, investigate yourself in the activities in the Spiritist Center. Are you collaborating with greater joy? Please do. Please share, like, subscribe. Most, most importantly, reach out to the Spiritist group closer to you. There is so much good that we can do together. There's so many activities you can partake even when we are apart. There's a lot of things that 
are done behind the scenes that you can help with. He's saying, test your own patience. Are you calmer, more affable, more understanding? Tuesday, 8 p.m. is usually when we broadcast this. Yet you might be listening to this in another time. So the invitation for today is when you wake up the next day, you pray as your duty as an incarnate spirit. And you say, please, God, allow me to be calmer more affable and more understanding towards myself and the errors of others, he's saying. Do you notice a broader willingness to serve voluntarily? He is saying, research your own or reflect about your capacity for sacrifice. Have you sacrificed for the um, greater good? Have you been able to detach from material possessions, material titles, material things, in order to have a little bit less comfort, in order to make someone's life better? I like this one. Do you use more intensely the words pronounced we, our, and ours instead of I, mine, mine? In the culture we live today is all about me, my, mine. Yet we know that we are humanity. Today you are living in this physical body. Tomorrow you may be in the spiritual realm. And in previous lives you were living in other places. In this life you're living here today. Tomorrow you're going to live in a different place. So we are invited to get less from, to take less to our own and give more to others. So use my, I, mine and less and use more we ours and ours because ultimately everything belongs to god the work you do at work is an opportunity to serve the work we do in the spiritist movement is actually a work of the master jesus who is our governor of the planet so it's all about us it's about you as a being living in society, the love of society. So we have things that we can contribute, yet we are part of a greater good. And, and, and Andrea Louise will say here, have you your moments of sadness or anger rarer now? Are we more apt to see all the vicissitudes of light, of the difficulties of life as needed opportunities of improvement? And he goes further because the good spirits are kind, but they are direct and they tell us what we need to do. At this moment on the earth, we are in a level that we need to be pushed. We need to make sure that we are forging ahead, leaving the old behind and being birthed anew each and every day where you leave your imperfections, you work diligently to get rid of what doesn't serve you anymore so he's asking here has the little remorse ridden in the recesses of your soul decreased have you dissipated on old enemies and dislikes is there any reason we shouldn't like everybody of course i'm asking for us to do a lofty goal today we're still very separate but tomorrow go to the books of andrea louise and emmanuel you're gonna see the good spirit see each and every person as a brother or a sister. So there's no reason for you and I to have old enemies and dislikes. Free yourself of that feeling of revenge, of hurt. Free yourself and let things be handled by divine providence. He says, have you overcome chronic lapses of inattention and neglect? Have you studied more deeply the doctrine that you profess? Read, read, read. Today, with the advent of social media, we are using a lot of our time to be connected online. And of course, there's a place and a time for that kind of activity. You and I are connected here, physically distanced, yet spiritually connected through the blessings of the internet. So let's use the resources we have to connect the right way and not waste our time. He says, Have you, do you help those in need with greater abnegation? Are we able to step away from our own needs and observe the people around us that were put in our lives so that we can serve them? Just not reverse engineer it. If you were in need, wouldn't you like someone to notice? 
and come to your rescue. And I'm not only talking about physical needs, food, shelter, clothing, safety. I'm talking about spiritual needs, psychological needs. Let's be more aware that folks around us may be in need of our help more than we can realize. He's saying here, have you really been praying? We talk a lot about prayer and spiritism, right? It's a beautiful connection between us and God. Your thought transmission to the object of your prayer. Yet, do we really pr be mindfully praying everywhere and anywhere we need? The question from Andrea Louise, have you been praying? And when do you pray? Write down in the comments. When do, do you normally pray and how you pray it? And are we really do pray in the, the way the spirits teach us in the gospel according to spiritism? A lot of food for thought, right? This is a, an invitation, a come to Jesus moment here by um, Andrea Louise. And of course, I'm just a messenger, so I'm asking those questions myself. All of the spiritist uh, speakers and hosts, remember we are always also in humans and we are all in a process of evolution ourselves so nobody is infallible we all have uh, things to work on so we are every time we say something to you remember we're the first ones to hear it because our mouth is closed your ears are closer to our mouths than you are so we are always working on our own selves as well and he says are your words more indulgent your arms more active and your hands giving more blessings. Have you in fact been more joyful and happy inside in the, least, in the last three years? Everything moves along. Everything evolves. Let us check our individual revenue with Christ, our credit with Christ. He says here, spontaneously weigh in the existence today while living in a peaceful circumstance so that tomorrow you don't see that obligation under the impact of, the, of pain. Let's learn through love, not pain. Let's do today what you can, what is yours to do in the world. Do you know, friend, that you're unique? There's nobody else in the universe just like you. I'm not saying this out of vanity. You are a spirit that was created by the hands of God. Simple and ignorant. Destined to become a pure spirit. So you have the agency of free will. Of choice. So that we can progress faster. There is a mission that is just yours. Nobody else. How do I know that? There is a book that we study here on Tuesday morning called Right Path. And in one of those chapters, Andrea Louise, um, excuse me, Emmanuel will say that God put you in the universe as a unique being with a unique mission and the support you need is there. So it's up to us to feel this uniqueness of law, God inside of us, with us, supporting us as you and I find what we came here to do. And I assure you, is not to accumulate physical things, titles, appearances is really for love. It's about time the earth is progressing. It's about time that we move beyond appearances and physical to really work on our spiritual life. And that's what Andrea Louise is for, just asking kindly, is saying, do you better understand the function of pain? Are you able to help with more, more abnegation? Have you been praying? Have your ideas evolved? Dear friends, if we're not evolving our ideas, we're stagnant. Hopefully, you have different ideas today, different information in your system. You've studied more, you've gained knowledge, you have gained experience, you've lived through some things. Then you hopefully have different ideas when then you were 10. You've grown morally, you've grown spiritually, you've grown physically, and you've grown emotionally. The more we know, more will be asked of us. So let's push on that growth. He says here, Do not fool yourself. A day that is gone is another share of responsibility, another step towards the spiritual life. This day that is gone can either be a valued opportunity or a missed one. You want to be in the side of valued opportunity. 
go to the book Messengers by Andrea Louise, you're going to see examples of people, of spirits, who were prepared for decades to come back to the earth with a specific mission of spreading the good news in different aspects of life. Some failed, some fulfilled their mission. So whatever your reincarnatory plan is today, make it that day to the day today be this valued opportunity and not a missed opportunity. There's no time for us to waste. He says here, interrogate your own conscience regarding the use of your time of to promote health and to promote opportunities of doing the good you enjoy in your daily life. Do it now, Andrea Louise says, while you still have the human body. Use this possibility to reconsider the guidelines and easily undo mistakes. Because when we go, if we don't fulfill our mission, you will often be more difficult in the other side. So go back, issue 34, let us examine ourselves. This is the first article of that issue. Go back through the list, print it out, have it on your phone at the end of the day, every day. Go through this. Have I been kinder? Have I been calmer? Have I been more patient? Have I served others with more abnegation? Goes hand in hand with the comments of the spirits in, in the question 919 of self-knowledge. Do a journal. Write down how you are. And now if you didn't fulfill the goal, the lofty goals you have set for that day, forgive yourself. See, visualize yourself as this multimillionaire being that is growing. Some days we will do it right. Some days we may not hit the mark. Yet we are, the important thing is that we're committing to do better. We need to do better. It's not about time. We leave our dormant, sleepy consciousness into awareness. And then we can better serve one another. We can better serve God because God makes itself available to us, makes itself known in our daily lives through the presence of others. When we serve one another, we are co-creating with God. And that's my wish for you, dear friends, that after reading this, you are able to better examine what you do on a daily basis with the light of the rational faith of spiritism. And then we can work each and every day to be better today than we were yesterday and that's it for today i I invite you to go to spiritismagazine.org download the app download the, the pdf version order the physical version of the magazine and you can also Parallel to that, go to cardiacradio.com and the podcast section. You're going to find a different podcast that we recorded with articles of the Spiritist Magazine. And Cardiac Radio also has an app that can listen 24-7. So there's a lot of things we can do to nourish our souls each and every day. Brought to us by the guy, with the guidance of the good spirits and through the mediums by the good spirits. We have these beautiful messages that we can find nowhere on the earth. Let us serve, let this serve as a warning of our awakening, of awakened heart today. And invite you for a prayer. When we pray, we, re- we recommend that you close your eyes. It's safe for you to do so. It just eliminates some of the outside um, stimuli. allows you to bring your attention inwardly. And as you pray, right now or anywhere, you repeat the words of the prayer mentally so that we can augment the power of the prayer shall we dear mother father god thank you for the blessings of being together today thank you for the opportunity of studying the spiritist magazine dear god may you guide our path during this lifetime We pray that we are able to receive your loving inspiration today and always. Dear God, today we pray for those who suffer all around the world, in both realms of life. May the good spirits travel all around, inspiring us, guiding us, spreading consolation and helping us to be resilient 
in the face of the vicissitudes of life. Dear God, we pray for those in our homes who suffer, in our neighborhoods, in our cities, in our states. May your love and your grace be bestowed upon all of us on the earth. Dear God, we pray for those who are in hospitals, those who are in prisons, those who are in psychiatric institutions. May we pray for those who are in orphanages in the areas of war, those who are homeless and those who are lonely. Dear God, we pray that all of humanity can be united with the goal of serving you. Dear God, please guide our path today. May you help control our emotions and inspire us with good ideas so that we may fulfill your will for us in this lifetime. Dear God, we ask you for your protection. With your guidance and with your permission, we end our studies today. And so be it. Dear friends, thank you so very much for joining me. As always, God willing, I'll be back with you next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. In the meantime, may God guide your path today and always. Bye, friends.